in the Washington Post. Uh, I usually try and ignore it as much as possible, but it's splashed all over the place right now. The headline in the Washington Post slash Amazon uh, newspaper and online source says that the president um, apparently through sources in the White House is, is not prepared for an onslaught by the Democrat majority in Congress in the House of Representatives if that happens. It doesn't seem likely to me. You know Donald Trump pretty well. Here's a guy who uh, made himself into a, a multi-billionaire. It doesn't seem likely to me that the guy is, is not going to be prepared for a worst-case scenario. Well, Graham, first of all, thanks for having me today. Um, you know, I, like you, try not to react to the Washington Compost when they print stuff like that. But let me point out, first of all, that it requires a two-thirds majority of the U.S. Senate to remove a sitting president if he is impeached in the House. And I'm not ready to concede the control of the House to the Democrats for an election that's almost two months away. One thing I can say about Donald Trump, having known him intimately for 40 years, is that he is consistently underestimated, uh, and that he's a warrior by nature. He's a counterpuncher. He clearly is getting ready for an onslaught with the termination of Don McGahn, who I think has undermined his presidency both politically and legally. While I may applaud McGahn's efforts to get us a more conservative judiciary, his advice regarding uh, the termination of Jeff Sessions, the uh, outrageous activities of Rod Rosenstein, uh, and the changes the president clearly needs to make have been counterproductive, in my opinion. Don't count Donald Trump out, ever. Uh, he's a brawler, and I think he's ready to rumble. Yeah, and, and I think that uh, you're right. I want to talk about McGahn, but, but first I want to stay on this issue of uh, control of the House of Representatives and possible uh, impeachment. Yeah, you're right. Donald Trump... Uh, is a counterpuncher. We've seen that on the campaign trail. And when you look at somebody like Rudy Giuliani, I think he's just the tip of the spear. But if the Democrats do take control of the House of Representatives, I think you would admit, admit there was going to be some sort of uh, political hell, uh, a, a firestorm, if you will, a political hell that will rain down uh, on this president. And right now, Roger, uh, through the halls of Congress, apparently there's some sort of spreadsheet that's floating around among Republicans of the worst-case scenario of this political hell predictions in terms of the investigations. And on that list, among other things, the Democrats would start investigating President Trump's tax returns. We know they've been screaming about that for years now, literally. Trump's dealings with Russia, that's obvious. The firing of James Comey, the travel ban, family separation, on and on and on. Now, when you look at this list and you look at, at the Comey uh, firing, first of all, it is completely lawful, legal, and constitutional for the president of the United States to fire the FBI director who operates below him. It is completely and totally within his authority. But this one stands out to me as where the Democrats might try and prove some kind of obstruction. What do you think? Well, uh, Mr. Comey has not helped himself with a series of provable lies which have come to the fore since the time of his termination. Why, Graham, does that list sound like a total recycle to me? I think, actually, we've adjudicated all those things. Yeah. My advice to the president is somewhat different. I would take action now and then make this election a referendum on those actions. I would fire Jeff Sessions, Mr. Rosenstein, uh, perhaps maybe even Mr. Mueller, who the constitutionality of his probe is truly questionable, and then take my case to the American people. Go on TV, explain to the people why you're doing what you are doing, and then let's vote on it. Right. Uh, the Democrats have no strategy, they have no platform other than impeachment. Where's their positive plan for the economy, for trade, for job creation? They have none of those things. It's pure unadulterated hatred for the president, nothing else. We've talked at length on this program that Jeff Sessions uh, should do his constitutional duty uh, and uphold the laws of the land, but also uphold his, his job in terms of running the Department of Justice. Seems like he's certainly abdicated a certain portion uh, of his job at the DOJ. And another reminder here that impeachment is all about what transpired while a president is in office. And that laundry list deals with a lot of things the president uh, wasn't president uh, at the time. Okay, so the White House counsel, I, I want to go back to, to McGahn. Uh, what do you know about McGahn in terms of uh, uh, how you think he would come off as a witness um, in, in the Mueller probe? Because we know that he, he spent copious amounts of time uh, talking to Robert Mueller's uh, folks. And you, as you pointed out, he's played a key role in appointing judges. But you have uh, doubts about the guy? 
Well, very definitely. He smells a lot like John Dean to me. 30 hours of testimony for Mr. Mueller, 30 hours, that's longer than an entire day. Uh, what could he possibly be talking about? Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.